Oh yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Let's go, that's the one. About time, let's go. What's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be doing some product photography. Now, this is something that I've never really done before, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be an adventure. Uh, I consider myself still very new to all this photography and video stuff, but I'm learning a lot along the way and I am ready to just keep producing good content for you guys. So with today's products, I have a pair of shoes and a watch. Now, those are two very different products, which means that the shots that I'm gonna get are not gonna be similar in any way, and that just means I'm gonna have to be extremely creative with everything that I shoot. So right off the bat, I am forcing myself to become a much better product photographer because I am shooting different products. As of right now, I'm gonna be using my 50 millimeter lens, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna be switching between this and the 16 to 35 millimeter lens for different shots, but I don't know yet. I'm not exactly sure of all the shots that I'm gonna get yet, so we'll see. The first product that I'm gonna shoot is the pair of shoes. I already have the first shot that I want set up, so on that note, let's just jump right into it. So this is the setup I have for the first shot. Obviously, as you can see, it's a pair of Jordans, so anybody that loves Jordans, I think you're gonna appreciate these product shots. Now for this shot, I do have three light sources that I need. I have one that is up there, I have one that is over there, and as you can see, I have one right here. For me, the one right here is the, the most important one. Now the reason I think this is the most important light source of this shot is because if I turn it off, as you can see, there's a lot more shadows and these are shadows that I do not want in this shot. So I'm gonna turn this light back on. And the good thing about this light is that I can change the colors of it, as you can see, changing it. This is a Philips Hue light, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. But yeah, uh, yeah, I can make it pretty much any color I want using my phone, but I'm gonna try and keep it as white as possible. And yeah, let's, we're gonna get some shots. Now I know the basketball is pink, but that's gonna be something we adjust in post. So yeah, let's, let's get some shots. All right, so shot one out of the way. For the next shot, I was thinking of tying some shoestrings together in a crosshatch form, like kind of like you see the side right there, see the side of the shoe, kind of like that and shoot through just to kind of, I don't know, kind of emphasize how that is a big important feature of the shoe. So let's, uh, let's get that set up. So the initial setup of this is going to be easy, just getting the shoes in place. But I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to get the shoe strings to kind of cross hatch and all that. So now it's one of those times where I really got to be creative. Okay, so my current solution to get this cross hatch effect that I want to get is I have, this, I have the shoelaces, I have tape, uh, I put two chairs over here, I brought the tripod a lot closer and hopefully I can tie everything together and it comes out the way I'm hoping it does in my head. All right, so the struggle of this is I'm gonna have to take this shot with one hand. So yeah, this might not be fun, but I'm gonna get this shot. Sometimes you gotta improvise. So the, the holding of the strings while trying to focus and take the shot, that didn't work out too well. So yeah, we're gonna, if I can ever get this tape, we're gonna, we're gonna just try some ingenuity right here. All right, that was, that was a hassle. Uh, let's move on to the next shot. So for my last shot with these shoes, I am gonna just suspend this one shoe and I'm gonna tie it up with some dental floss. So yeah, gonna see how those go. Ugh. 
<sighs> all right so that's all I'm gonna do for the shoe now it's time to move on to the watch all right so this is the first setup that I have for the watch and if I'm being honest I think the watch is gonna be infinitely easier than the shoes because just the setup I have in mind for these watch shots is just so much easier there's not much tinkering that I have to do I don't have to use any shoestrings or anything like that so hopefully these shots are a lot easier to set up and they come out a little nicer in the end for this next shot with the watch I have this hourglass that's what it's called right an hourglass and I thought it would be cool to try and get some sand falling while I get a shot of the watch so All right, uh, guess it's time to move on to the next shot. For this last shot, I was gonna use this nice, nice fake plant that I have. That's, that's a good note for anybody doing photography. If you got fake plants, be sure to use them. And if you don't have fake plants, get some fake plants because they're gonna come in handy at some point. When it comes to watches, I think watches and plants, for some reason, I think they always look good together. So I thought, why not? We're gonna see how I can make this watch work in this fake plant. Woo! Oh yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Let's go, that's the one. About time, let's go. All right, so guess it's time to go edit these photos and see how they turned out. And we're gonna go over some of my favorites, so yeah. Alright, so I edited all my photos, I have a lot of mixed feelings about them. There is some good, there's some bad, and there's some that didn't turn out as great as I had hoped. There's some that turned out a lot better than I thought they would. So, like I said, a bunch of mixed feelings, and as I said at the beginning of the video, this was my first real attempt at product photography. So it wasn't like I was expecting to have the best product shots out there, but I guess a part of me kind of expected it to be a little easier. Product photography is something that is definitely a little harder than I initially thought, but hey, that just shows that I have a ton more room to grow when it comes to this product photography. So now let's start taking a look at some of these shots. I wanna take a look at all of these watch shots first because those were the ones that I wasn't as happy with when compared to the shoes that I did. Here's the first watch shot that I did. It was with the watch embedded in the rocks. I'm not mad about this. I'm not over ecstatic about it. I do still think the watch looks pretty good with the rocks. However, I think this would work better if the watch was in a different kind of material, like if it was with more shiny objects, like shiny marbles or rocks like that, then I think the watch would work a little bit better with the rocks or this type of shot. The watch itself is shiny, so if I had the scene set to where everything else was shiny around it, I think it would make more sense. I'm not saying this is a terrible shot, but I just think there are little elements that could have been added to it to make the shot better. Now here are a couple other shots with the watch and the rocks that I really enjoyed. Nothing too special about them, just different types of edits and uh, yeah, like I said, I really liked how a lot of these turned out. But again, there are little tiny things that could have easily been improved upon. Moving on to the next watch shot and that was with the hourglass. Now, my thought process was I was hoping to be able to get some sand actually falling in the background with the watch in the foreground. But every shot I took with this, the shot just didn't turn out the way I had hoped. The aperture wasn't set right ever. The background was always a little too blurry or it was too much in focus. When the background was too much in focus, it took away from the watch itself and the watch was supposed to be the hero of the shot. So although, again, I don't think this is a terrible shot, it could have easily been improved upon. Something I probably could have done was change the placement of the watch when it comes to the hourglass. Instead of having the hourglass all the way in the background, maybe I could put it next to the watch next time. But that's just going to take a little bit of experimenting. The next shot with the watch was with the fake plant. Now these were my favorite shots with the watch. Because as I said earlier, I think the watch just looks very good with these types of plants. And this particular shot was my favorite shot. The watch is hanging from the plant. I don't know why, I just think it looks good. I think the black and the green just have a nice contrast to them. So it just makes the watch stand out in a way that 
kind of complements everything else around it as well. Something I probably would like to change in the future if I did this again would add more plants to the background so that you don't have that little bit of backdrop showing. If the entire scene was green with plants and then you had the watch standing out like that, then I think the shot would have turned out much better. Moving on to some of my favorite shots now, and this is with the shoes. Now the first set of shots that I took, they included the basketball and the shoe box in the background. With this first one, I made it black and white. The shoe is black and white itself, so I don't think that really took away from the shoe itself. A big reason why I made it black and white was because the basketball was pink. And I think having a pink basketball would really take away from how the actual shoe looked. The main focus is supposed to be on the shoes. So any tiny detail where the pink would take away from the viewer's eye, that would make the shot less impactful. So yeah, with this first shot, I really liked it. I like how you can see both shoes. You can see a lot of aspects of the shoes themselves. And I just like the way it's set up. Moving on to the next shot. Now this is just with one shoe, the basketball and the shoe box. Now I know I just said having a pink basketball would take away from the overall shot and distract the viewer from the shoes. But with this one, I still think it was able to work out a little bit. I tried to make the pink as dull as I possibly could in the editing process so that it wouldn't distract nearly as much from the shoe itself. The issue I have with this shot is that it doesn't really look like I'm doing a shoe product shot. It looks like I'm kind of trying to display the shoe, the basketball, and the box itself. So in the future, I'm going to need to add little elements that would just have much more focus on the shoe itself. The next shots I have with the shoes were when I tried to attempt the crosshatch little pattern with the other shoelaces. Now these shots were okay. In my head, they were going to look a lot different, but the setup was a little difficult and just I don't know, it, sometimes things just don't work out the way they do in my head, but I'm still happy I attempted these shots. Now again, these shots weren't exactly what I wanted, but I still think they somehow displayed the shoe in a way that really showed off a, an important feature of the shoe, which was that crosshatch pattern on the shoe itself. So even though I'm not a personal fan of these shots as much as the first shots that I took, I still think when it comes to product photography itself, these are better product shots than the shots that I had with the basketball. Now these next shots are my favorite shots. These were the shots where I used the dental floss to suspend the shoe in the air and I was able to capture the shoe exactly how I thought I would in my head. So as you can see it just looks like the shoe is suspended and floating in midair. In the editing process I used the Adobe Lightroom brush tool to eliminate and get rid of the dental floss so you can't see those in the shots. I think it looks really good because it really shows off all the details that you can see on the shoe. There's no other distracting elements within the shot. All your focus is going to be on the details of the shoe. And personally, I think I had the aperture set to where you have the entire shoe in focus. So nothing about the shoe is slightly blurred. And when it comes to product photography, I think that's very important. You don't want to have any details that you want shown blurred because of a wrong aperture. There you have it people, that's all I have for my first attempt at product photography. I obviously like the shoe shots better than the watch shots, but that's just my personal opinion. You may have liked the other shots better. Like I said, I wasn't entirely happy with all the shots that I got, but I'm happy that I attempted them to begin with. So even though I'm not a complete novice when it comes to this, there's still a lot of room to improve. And I feel like that's how you should feel as a photographer no matter what. You should always feel as though there's room to improve in some aspect of your photography. But anyways, what I want to see below is what your favorite shot was. Tell me what you liked and disliked about all of the shots that you saw in this video. And trust me, your feedback is going to help me a ton. I'm going to get ideas about what I can improve upon. I already have some ideas about what I think I can improve upon. But it doesn't hurt to hear other people's opinions about what they think I should do differently in the future. And if this is a video that you really enjoyed watching, be sure to hit that like button. And don't be scared to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. When I see my channel start to grow more, that's only going to push me a little harder to get the content out that I want to put out to you guys. And there we have it. Because I'm never sure how to end one of these videos, all I'm going to say is, hope you're staying safe still. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.